33. Call to order the regular meeting of the Morning Village Board for January 14th to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. to work on that process. I've not been involved in it myself either. Well, here's the uh, issue I have, because at that meeting, you, yourself, suggested that we form a special meeting for this issue. Understood. Three different type technologies. Great, I love you too. Um, Mr. Holston also twice reiterated that he needs input from people and trustees. Sure. So, without a committee, a special committee, how can all these statistics and due diligence be done to one or two people? It has to be done to everybody so everybody knows the facts that are coming down. I, I, I'm just curious because it's been three months, we don't have a committee and looking into this to the people who it's going to affect. Right. And we do need our input into this to a committee of not one, not two, but several, who are going to make up an ordinance. Well, when it comes to setting the policies and the legislation, that's up to the trustees to be involved in that process. Right. And we are not at a point where we're even going to vote on the issue. This is just a status on that matter. The fact that a particular trustee has been involved with staff and others that they deem necessary to be involved in that. I have confidence that that process is moving along. Before a vote would be taking place, there would be an opportunity for public comment and, and interaction. If you would want a second week, uh, you know, like a, an extra week to review that, uh, so it could come before a discussion and, and not actually voted on at that time, we don't have anything to present at this time either. Well, I, I guess I'm just going back on what everybody was saying. We're going to form a special committee. We never said we were going to form a special committee. We said we'd have a special meeting. Uh, I quote your words. You, uh, I'm sorry, but I did write them down. Um, you need to form uh, a special committee as a whole. Too much information to come down. We need input. This was said three times by you, and the input was said by Dave Holston twice. Okay, so this is a committee that was suggesting to be formed, but we're not following through. Again. So, again, I asked for transparency, and now I'm getting secrecy because we're not getting uh, uh, the committee, as suggested by this board here, to be formed and get input from not only the people, but trustees and all the people who it affects. All right. Again, Mr. Shrek, I have not been involved in that process. One of the trustees has been developing a platform to work on. If you don't have something to work on, people don't have the ability to nitpick or right. identify what's good, what's bad, whatever else. Right. If you don't form something, if you don't give somebody an opportunity to have something that they can visualize and work with, then you're not going to have the opportunity for you to be able to work together on something. You have to put something in front of people before they can identify what they like or don't like. 
So again, I'm trusting our, one of our trustees to move that process along and bring it forth so there can be a special meeting right. so that a public hearing regarding this matter, I've got no problem with it. If I said it before, I'll say it again. i got no problem with a special meeting pertaining to that issue. Now, as far as the people that are involved in that, I'm not even sure who all has been involved in that process, but I know the police chief has been involved. I think the attorney has been consulted at times on that. Uh, the administrator has been involved. Uh, the superintendent of the public works has been involved. Um, Mary Jo, I don't know, were you even involved in that? Okay. Uh, at least one of the, somebody from the public that has experience with these things has been involved. Um, Who would that be? I believe it would be Janet Luke, Janet Litton. Uh, she has experience apparently from another community that had this. Was that the one from Aurora? I believe so. Okay. She lives here in our community. Well, uh, you know, that one from Aurora is fine and dandy. And, uh, you know, she was saying how bad the crime was in Aurora at that time. Sure. I'm just trying to find out, and Chief, if I'm wrong, I don't see too much crime in this town due to you guys. So, you know, to implement another thing based on what another person says from a huge town like that, again, this is where we need to give input and to do our due diligence to find out the statistics between towns and our own town to find out the police reports on who's been uh, called out for renters and homeowners. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can I ask, oh. can I ask one, a couple questions sure. too? Um, I know you mentioned you love technology. Have you tried emailing the village or anybody here or sp speaking to anybody of the village if any meetings have been called? I was waiting for this committee to be formed. That's what I've been waiting for. So how can I give input to a committee no, or I'm, an, I'm, anybody? I'm just asking if you perhaps have called to see if anything has been formed. Everybody in this room here, most of the people know how to get a hold of me. And that's what I was waiting for. Waiting for a phone call. They all have my numbers. And the problem is, we don't have that committee for the input to be given into. So until that point comes, what else can I do until we find out all the facts and do our due, own due diligence? After the meeting, would you care to share your email address with me? Sure, not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody ask for agenda items only? I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. Warren and Holston. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Trustee Horn? Yes. Pop? Yes. yes. Rasick? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Gray? Yes. And Holston? Yes. <coughs> Um, Your Honor, previously we've gone through uh, executive session minutes. Uh, first, the attorney and I went through them, or I'm sorry, the interim administrator and I went through them, and then uh, the attorney joined the trustees and myself and yourself uh, going through the subject matter on the dates indicated on the agenda, and um, I believe these are all ready for release based on a motion to approve. Okay. I entertain a motion to approve the release of the, the state of executive session minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. Raise your horn. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Trustee Pop? Yes. Rasick? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Gray? Yes. Alston? Yes. And Horn? Yes. I've got nothing under my agenda. Uh, the administrator was called away to a uh, meeting that he had to attend for Will County EMA, so I'll jump to his, and that was a request uh, presented to the village by a business located on uh, Industrial Drive. Previously, they had a sign located there. Um, it had been taken down. Um, they have gotten permission from the property owner on the corner. I know we've made. Uh, a stated goal of implementing directional signage in our town, that being one of the obvious uh, locations that we've been working on. Uh, this would not be in conflict with ultimately where I, I, I believe we were talking about, because this would be 
north of on the north corner of Industrial and Governors as compared to the south corner, which is I presume where we probably have the, the, the larger mining the directional sign. Uh, they're merely asking for permission to have a sign much like the sign they had before, which is also very much like the real estate sign that the board gave uh, approval for on a temporary basis. Um, so at this point, I'm looking for uh, a motion to approve, allowing them to have a, uh, when I say temporary, still a nice looking, I believe like a four foot by eight foot plywood sign, I believe it would be, or something of that caliber that would be uh, durable material. Um, not temporary as in like, you know, just metal sticks on the ground kind of thing. Um, and I believe it would actually be adjacent or attached to the real estate sign that's also located on that property. Um, so. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Gonzalez, Marizic. Discussion. Yes, sir. Temporary means how long? Well. I would, I would like to see us make some momentum on the monument signage, and uh, once we achieve that, uh, they understand that uh, they would no longer have the need for the temporary sign that would be there. So, um, do you want to stipulate a year, just or, as a safe measure, or whatever, or until, until, until we actually get a permanent installed. solution of some sort? I think you gave, uh, was it a year or a year and a half or something like that for the real estate sign? So. And this has to do with one of our existing businesses, not just a vacant building. So, is this something that the zoning committee is working on actively? Well, getting the monument signs is really more of a role of the the the, the staff here, uh, which we have to this point been rather short staffed. But that is our goal, and I think Larry's reached out to the the property owner on this particular corner as well. Um, this business owner has reached out to them as well, and um, there was Mr. Hampelis that actually owns the corner lot there. Um, kind of, and that lot was kind of split into two pieces when Browns became industrial and was kind of fragmented there a little bit. So, I don't know if you guys want to set a duration on this for uh, one year or something thereabouts. I have, I have one question. I was, I was looking at this. I guess. I'm not trying to pick on the animal welfare. Um, they want to draw a business. Where does this come different than our existing businesses that can't promote their own business? We, we've come to the realization that there's certain areas, especially in our industrial areas, that don't have the ready traffic going through there. Um, our industrial district, as compared to our commercial district, is even more hindered because uh, of that situation, and you'll see in other industrial parks, it's not uncommon in the industrial parks to have monument signs and such out there near the corners of the of the main thoroughfares. Um, I know we use examples. I think has been presented what they have done on, down in Mantino, um, and it's a very pleasant look and feel to what they have there. I, I think we have to deal with something maybe a little bit larger. Only because in Mantino you're doing a speeds of 30, 35 miles an hour, and some of these areas you're driving 45 miles an hour. Uh, if you're talking about originally the Manhattan Road, if you're talking industrial governors, um, you just need to take into account, you know, the greater the speed, the larger the sign to get the same effect. Um, but that's kind of a different issue, but I, I do want to pursue that, and make sure we move forward on that. Um, but in the interim, uh, they're merely asking that in the interim that we'll, we afford them the ability to have some temporary signage for a set duration. Um, well, I'd like to see a temporary be 12 months. Okay. Do, I will amend my motion to clarify that. Do you agree with that? Yep. Or the monument sign, whichever comes sooner, then they would take it down. Okay. Wait, is that okay as well? I'm going to assume that's the, the, the intent. All right. Um, roll call, please. Trustee Racing? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Gray? Yes. Holston? Yes. Horn? Yes. And Pop? Yes. Okay, official report. Public works. Um, <laughs> 
I want to discuss tonight a little bit. I want to touch on uh, what's been going on as far as social media uh, running wild on our public works, uh, and they have every right to because it's freedom of speech. Uh, but ever since the snow came out and the icy roads came out, I know that they've been uh, calling in the village hall saying the streets aren't done, the streets aren't done, where's, where's the public works at, where's everybody at? Myself and the mayor actually talked about it. Um, we're going back to like January 5th, which was the Monday after the first ice storm that came in overnight. Um, we came in about 1.32 o'clock in the morning. Our public works uh, folks, there was three gentlemen out there at 2 o'clock in the morning that night, icing or salting down the streets. With that kind of cold, and when you don't have a lot of people driving on it, you're going to throw salt down, but it's really not going to take effect until you get to the morning hours when you're going to get more traffic. Um, so they were out on that particular Saturday from 2 o'clock in the morning to 4.45 in the morning, uh, back out at 8.30 in the morning. As a matter of fact, that morning, um, getting the garbage cans, I even called our superintendent and said, your guys out because everything's icy. He said, yep, they're on break right now. Um, they're out twice on that day. Um, the next morning, they're back out at 4 o'clock in the morning. So if you don't see them, they do have a certain plan of attacking the outsides of the subdivisions and working their way in for the main thoroughfares to get in and out of the subdivisions. Um, I have a list here. I can go through it, but I, I won't go through them. everyone. They had five guys out that first ice storm. Uh, January 5th, that snowstorm that came through, they had every gentleman out there on the streets. Um, you have the bigger trucks working the bigger streets, you have the smaller trucks going through the cul-de-sacs. Uh, so again, I just, you know, I reiterate to him in private and to superintendent, to the gentleman in public works, they are out there working and, you know, uh, just give them some due time. They will get to your street. I understand that everybody's important, but there is a system of the way they work. So um, I just want to reiterate that again. You know, on January 8th, the last Thursday, when it started snowing at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they were out until about 5, 30, 6 o'clock, went back in, took a little bit of a break, and went back out that night. So, I mean, you do have to give, you can't be out there 8, 10 hours driving around. It's not safe for anybody. Okay? So, again, I appreciate the job that these gentlemen are doing. Uh, just so you know, they are out there. I get it. They're not coming down the street a hundred times, but they are out there. Report. Parks and Recreation. Well, I actually have a lot to report because of our new director, Mary Jo Vincent. I hope um, you all remember her from years past. She's decided to come back and join our staff and do the fabulous job that I know she can. So since uh, beginning in January, we already have scheduled events, crack, um, crack classes for children, Mother's Day tea, a Joliet Slammers baseball game, um, July 25th, so we are already planning that far out. Uh, and I, I think for everybody, a community document shred day, which is um, probably something that will come up very quickly, seeing, seeing tax season is coming up. A gymnastics class, a teen and adult taekwondo, bringing black, back karate class, and Saturday, Saturday craft classes. And um, Mary Jo has already reached out uh, to social media, onto Facebook, and has already gotten people interested in being instructors um, for our parks and rec classes. And we also have grants that she's working on for the ComEd Green Region Program. Never heard of that one, so good for you, thank you. And also obtaining free tree samplings for residents on, on from the Living Land and Water Foundation grant. So um, she's already working very hard for us, and she also went to the Chamber of Commerce meeting too, I, and obviously to know, let everybody know what she's doing, um, but kind of see what our Chamber of Commerce does. Um, and she also is in talks with Moni Mavericks, the football uh, team, the library, and the instructors already. So again, Mary Jo, thank you. Finance? Um, we have on here a discussion regarding the two-year vehicle sticker. Uh, this was implemented by previous board, I guess it was about uh, two years ago. <laughs> Uh, it's been in place for approximately a year and a half, and we just wanted to revisit that and see if there's any need to, uh, well, let's put it this way, uh, discussion regarding, do we 
continue it as a two-year program or go back to a one-year program. There's obviously pros and cons of uh, either side and as you know, board, whatever we do, you're going to get some pushback, whatever decision uh, we make on this. Uh, does anyone have any comments or questions? This is not a pro vote, merely just a consensus to identify and, and, what, and, and we need to start, survey the people, basically. And we need to start thinking about this, too, because uh, budget time is coming up and we want to plan for one or two years. Mm -hmm. And also, if, they, if, if we go back to a one-year system, the office staff has to uh, know that. My personal, if, my personal feeling is that we should maintain the status quo at least till the end of this two-year cycle. Um, uh, Which is this year? Yeah, I, I think the worst, uh, you know, the, the pushback from it has occurred already. People are used to this two-year program. Let's let's keep it as it is. And there's costs in going back to a one-year system. I would maintain to keep it. When we went to a two-year system, the, the plan was Again, I, I believe, like you said, Doug, it was three years ago, uh, to lighten up the workload on the Village Hall employees. And now we know that the Village Hall at this present time is a little bit short-handed. So if we go back to year after year after year, now you're going to overload them more. My personal opinion, again, we left it, we put it two years for a reason, we should leave it two years. Why? Why every two years, we're going to go one year, two year, one year, two year. Let's just leave it two years, in my opinion. Again, we're, we did it to lighten up the load in the office staff, and now there's not as much office staff as there used to be. May I say, uh, Trustee Gray, I think you're done. Yeah, no, go ahead. It, uh, the main, one of the main reasons for that was to cut down on hours of labor for the village. Having a two-year sticker instead of going through it every year with every resident, God, it's in the long run saved us some hours of labor. I appreciate you bringing it up, Trustee Horn. Um, I know there's been people that have been very vocal one way or the other. Uh, it's at your discretion as to whether or not you want to listen to one side more than another. Uh, Ultimately, it's up to you as the board to determine. So, interact with some of your, the constituents in the community and find out what their preference is. And, and um, you want to leave it on there for another meeting or two or something like that, Doug, or just take it off unless somebody actually wants to change it? Or? You know, unless I hear otherwise, I would like to see it drop. Okay. The problem with this when they stay on, the squeaky wheel gets attention. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear from the objectors, not from people who say keep it the way it is. The biggest objection that we, I think we heard in the front office was the, the fact that they had to prepay for two years. And some people said, well, what if I move out? What if I, you know, and there was no discount rebate or anything else for any of that. The only thing we discounted is if they bought it after the first year, then they got, they don't have to pay for, for the following, you know, the, mm -hmm. the actual year that was left. Uh, but there was no rebates or anything else. So, in essence, the village probably made out a little bit more. Um, but so, you want to just. So I don't think it needs to be on that. The, the, it's it's your discretion. That's if if uh, trustees, you hear things you would like me to bring up again, I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Anything else, Trustee? Okay. Uh, business development. Trustee Wilson. Thank you, sir. Um, last year we had a uh, economic development recon show, retail show. Um, we had two people that went to Las Vegas. Um, and uh, I think they learned a lot. We had a pretty good report when they came back from both Kirk Hazer and Mayor Farquhar about what they learned and, and what they got out of it. Experience has shown me that these type of trade shows uh, take a couple of years before they generate any type of interest and or potential um, revenue or new businesses. Um, I think the village gets a good deal on something like this because we're not going by ourselves. We're going as a co-op with several other villages, which keeps the cost down. 
I don't know if you remember the marketing that they put together last year. I thought it was very good marketing. Um, but I also think that if they were just to go for one year, it was a waste of money because you don't get anything out of going one year. It's when you go year and year again and you establish relationships with the retailers and the people that are making the decisions that you begin to get successful. So my recommendation is that we have the money budgeted in the economic development budget uh, and that we should go again this year and get another report from the two that go on. I'm not sure um, who the two would be. I would assume the mayor would be one of them, probably the Caucasian or maybe somebody else. But I think it would be worthwhile for the village to do that again this year and then see what we get out of it and then make a decision next year about it what we do the following year. I think the cost would be under 5000 well under 5000 for this. Yeah. I believe, I know Daryl's not here, he had some things he would be able to go with. I believe a lot of that because it, it would, the portion, there's a significant portion that would be tip eligible as well. Uh, yes, sir. If we can designate how much is towards tip related issues on this project, we could take it out of the tip funds. Yeah. But we got to designate how much. And particularly with us knowing we're going to lose another big business this year, we need to start working on bringing in, quite frankly, smaller businesses. I don't think we're going to go out there and get a big fish right now. Uh, so I think uh, there's lots of opportunity. Uh, I haven't lost um, faith in us, our ability to get a grocery store. I know the study that we did this last fall, uh, we spent $7,000 on, and it didn't say that we can't get one. It just said that it's going to be tough. And I... I People in the village have spoken many times about the importance of having a grocery store. Um, we discussed several months ago the possibility of a co-op. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Farquhar, I believe you brought it up. Uh, that may still be a possibility, but I think we need to continue to look at other options as well. I think that the study shows that there is potential for that, and I don't think we should give up on it. That will be my recommendation and motion that uh, we go ahead this year, one more year, and then see what happens after that. May, be, before there's a, anything else on that, um, I think you and I had talked, there's a, there's a lot, 12 towns all together that are designated for going on this. Um, we're the only one that, uh, of, of those 12 that had stated a, a, an expectation of going that have not used a, um, the lady's name is Devaney. Uh, that deals with scheduling and booking appointments. Uh, and I believe that was a cost of $1,000. And last year when we went, it was definitely exploratory. It was out, you know, observing and things of that sort. Uh, when you have somebody who's got the connections and the inroads with the different retail um, industry, uh, and they can actually make appointments for you, that makes it a lot easier, especially since, again, we don't have anybody on staff that's currently dealing with economic development. Making those initial points of contact and booking those appointments makes a big difference. So, if we're going to do it, I'm just, if you don't mind amending that, either we do it and we include that. I would certainly be in favor of that. Okay. Well, this I thought was kind of like a discussion and not a per actionable input. So, perhaps I don't know the timing on this, but we, we can probably put it off. But some of this money, we ought to at least have a discussion that we can spend because in order to get this, you have to, it's going to be in May, you have to commit right now to some of this. So and that's I, part of the problem. And they're actually, they're, they are actually looking for a commitment from us. Yeah, and, and I apologize, I got busy at the end of the year with a few other things and forgot about it. Uh, so perhaps maybe we can have it in your action item in the next meeting in two weeks? Can we, what do we do normally? Um, yeah, we need to put on the, on the next agenda, but can we have an opinion at least for around so that we know if it was going to be useful? You can have a consensus. And that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. I apologize. And, and, and here again, part of the re part of the difficulty we're, we're in right now is for us to either go forward or or not. It makes a difference now uh, because uh, actually the deadline was supposed to have been yesterday for connecting up with Devaney and this type of situation there on that. Um, I don't know. Uh, if we postpone it two weeks, we might still be able to have that opportunity. I don't know. Um, but in all fairness to the other uh, communities that are going, if we can get a vote tonight, fine. If we got to delay it, we'll play it as we play it. Well, again, this is a budget that I would, I, I apologize. I was, I'm not reluctant. I just was negligent in talking. 
talking about this soon. I got busy and forgot about it. Uh, this happened this time last year as well. And, and that's that's on me. I'd like to see the figures from last year before we go ahead and do this because around five thousand dollars. I'd like to see. You know, <coughs> sure, it's five thousand dollars to go out there. What about flyers? What about you know? Uh, is it five thousand dollars as a package deal? What kind of flyers? Because I know we did flyers last year. You know, I don't know in our town. I like to see the figures from last year before no, it's just. Really no, exactly. I don't want to just get this dumped in our lap and go. Okay, we're going to make a decision tonight. Now, I'm not saying you are, Jesse. Also, I'm just, if you want a consensus, that's my opinion. Don't. I don't. I get it where we want to move forward, but we also, again, you're, you're saying you kind of slipped your mind. That's you know, being mad about it. It's, but we don't want to just jump to conclusions tonight. Okay. <laughs> well, I know it's less than five. I just picked that number. Well, up. Yeah, no, exactly. I know you don't have it exactly in your head, but I like to see the figures from last year. And can any of those materials be reused for this year? Are they completely mm -hmm. uh, and, and we, we created those in house last yeah, those year. Are, those are nothing. Your, your biggest expense is the hotel and the airport. You know, the rest of this, we didn't spend much money last year. No, because we, we did everything in house and the printed it. Savings by and doing it with the other mm -hmm. communities. That's where the cost, the cost of them. doing the event is what costs, and by doing it with other communities, we're saving a ton of money. But I don't know exactly what a ton is. I apologize. Okay. Um, can we do a telephone call? Would everybody be agreeable with that then? If we get you the information? If I can see those figures too, okay. I, would, I would abstain from any consensus tonight because I want to okay. see those. Okay, I'll, I'll um, work with Daryl tomorrow and see if we can get the information out of you. And the sooner we find out, then. Yeah, so, it, so is that okay, Larry, that we do it based on a, and then we'll reaffirm whatever the phone poll is at the next meeting? Uh, we are, in that situation where there's expenditure of money, uh, I would suggest maybe as a compromise we can contact that individual and say it appears as though we have a commitment to uh, proceed with this project, but we won't have full authorization for the next board meeting. That way you can at least put her on notice that put us down would give us about seven days. Well, 14 days. 14 days, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll follow up on that. So the, you had a motion, and I believe we now have a motion to the table? Or is it just we're, we're pulling the motion? I need a second on it. Okay, so it dies for a second. I'm just clarifying. Okay. Yes, All right. Thank you. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Uh, building services and code enforcement? No report at this time. Okay. Public safety and police? Or public threat? Attorney's report. Thank you, Mayor. I have one item for the board. Uh, no action item, but just an update. Uh, the Mayor and myself um, and Mr. Ravel's counsel, and along with Ruben, we have been in discussions with uh, this individual pertaining to uh, the reimbursement issue that we talked about the last board meeting, uh, somewhat complicated. We do have a verbal commitment from the gentleman, subject to a final sign-off by him. Um, there, there, it's a little more complex than what initially it was thought to be. Uh, we will get it accomplished, hopefully, by the next board meeting. Uh, he's been very cooperative. His attorney's been very cooperative, um, but we got to reduce it to writing. So and, and we did get a we did get a, a letter from him. we did get a letter signed by them regarding the the other amount that was yes, stipulated. So to uh, Trustee Holson's question at the last meeting, we have received that letter. Yeah, I, I'm but, sorry. but as far as the agreement for the terms of the overall uh, payback and uh, adjustment in the previous agreement from four and a half years ago, correct? That's what you're working. Yes, sir. He did sign, as the mayor indicated, he sent a letter December 24th, I believe, with a couple conditions. His condition was, like the mayor indicated, subject to a final agreement signed by both parties. And that's what we're working on. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. And under old business, uh, and again, this is a status, I believe, Trustee Holson. Yes, sir. And we've discussed the fact that these are two uniquely different ordinances for the purpose of simplifying life on our attorney and, and everything else. Um, one is landlord license, one is a nuisance abatement. Um, 
but in either or both of those, the goal is um, to formulate the structure, uh, David, uh, to formulate the structure, and I know you've been working tirelessly on that, um, to put something together so that the public can scrutinize and evaluate and we can have a special meeting if necessary to deal with that so that, you know, landlords, residents, rentals, whatever else can be aware of the situation and, and they can have plenty of time to deal with it. This is not intended for a vote tonight. So, David, if you want to give us an update on it. Yes, sir. Um, met recently with the village administration, with the chief, with uh, uh, DJ, with uh, uh, assistant or the uh, interim administrator and reviewed the landlord license ordinance. Uh, again, a little bit of history for the benefit of the uh, trustees. Uh, this came about as a result of uh, several calls that I received and emails from other residents in the community who are interested in seeing something like this. Um, I uh, started working with a then uh, minister that we had and uh, Barb, uh, Janet Linton's name came as somebody who I knew as a matter of fact she had come to a village board meeting and she had actually administered this at another village. Um, and so she had some recommendations that she gave us, uh, not just crime related, but also related to making sure that we have uh, things that minimize the uh, effort that the police have to spend to support these type of programs and help keep the community up and the homes in the community up. And we certainly have a lot of uh, homeowners and, and landlords in the village of Monique who live in Monique and do a very good job. I no suggestion there otherwise. The comment about the uh, committee on the whole is exactly true. We do plan on doing that. Uh, we have the template now. Uh, the group of the administrators have reviewed that. Uh, legally, in order for us to review it as trustees, we either need to do it in a meeting here, which I think would take too long, or to do it as a committee on the whole, which is what we had discussed previously, uh, as this gentleman pointed out. So I'm going to be recommending that uh, we have a meeting of the committee on the whole to go through this. We're waiting on actually the nuisance abatement ordinance. Uh, Chief is working on that with the village attorney. Uh, we need to get that language. There's a second issue here. If you'll remember, we passed an ordinance, kind of an emergency ordinance earlier in the year to keep uh, from having public uh, group gatherings of large amounts of people. Uh, the intent wasn't to do that as a permanent thing, but probably to try to put a nuisance ordinance together. Um, we're working on that. That should be done shortly. And then what we thought we'd do is try to go through both of them at the same time. They're not going to be the same ordinance. Each one will have to be a separate ordinance. But they do kind of relate to each other and hopefully will result in the um, uh, re rescinding of the other ordinance that was passed last year. Uh, but we do intend to have the landlord license ordinance for a public meeting committee of the whole so that we can get a hold of the public ahead of time. I'll get your phone number or email and get you the information ahead of time as well as anybody else that wants it. Uh, we just finished that up last week and there was a lot of work involved and we wanted to get that out of the way before we came back. So we'll make sure that the um, trustees and the administration all get a copy and make sure copies are available. And maybe we can put on the web page uh, as well for people to look at publicly. And, and, well. and, and Trustee Holson, if once, because we're not ready yet, but in the event that we get the the landlord license is pretty close, I believe. Um, I, again, I haven't looked at it yet, but I believe you guys are pretty close to getting that hammered out. But the nuisance abatement order, once we have that and the other one together, um, Larry, would you be interested in reviewing that even before we have the actual committee meeting? So if there's things that we that you know invaluable insight you might have that some adjustments might be able to be addressed before we even have to have that. Uh, public hearing. Most definitely. Okay. Yeah, we did it. No problem. Okay. Um, not, to, not to say we'll, we'll, we'll necessarily, you know, adhere to everything. Everybody everybody has their little quirks and nuances, but you know, by all means, we want to hear what everybody has to say about it. So, all right. Trustee Olson, anything else? So, we'll, we'll, um, we'll get that out and begin. Uh, we're really, at this point, is uh, the, the group has met, we've reviewed everything, we got the proofs back. And now we're wanting the village attorney to look at it. Uh, then we want to get public input, and then we can meet one more time and make any adjustments before we actually would come to the vote. So we're probably a couple months away. And again, we've tried to be very upfront about this, transparent, to use your word as well, uh, to make sure people know that we're working on this. 
but it is a long process and there's no reason to drag it out in the public until we really get closer to it. It's very definitely something I think that's going to be good for the landlords as well as for the village. And so, uh, but it is something we have to communicate as we get closer to it. And we're just about the point where we can start getting more public input from it. I really would prefer to get it out to some landlords. I'd like to get their input before we go too much further on this. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, item M, open to the public non-agenda items. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Come to the podium, give your name and address, please. That was 5006 Colonial. I had my lovely comment built. Is anything going to happen with trying to get us something to help out? Yeah, uh, we were one of those communities that by referendum did not pass the opt-out program. Uh, that would put us in a little bit better point of negotiation. Uh, as a result, we were part of the opt-in program. And of all the communities that were part of the opt-in program, we had the most major uh, participation on that. So you were one of the very few that even uh, took the opportunity to opt in on that. Um, I did, a number of us did here as well, because we were paying attention to all that, obviously. Um, but in general, uh, we had a dismal participation on that. Uh, when we were looking through the Will County Governmental League, I think was trying to coordinate on our behalf, as I did before, uh, the rates that they were coming back at were actually higher than combat at this time. So there would have been no benefit. Uh, it would have been an injustice for the village to move forward with trying to participate something that would have actually cost more. Wow. So in that regard, uh, there's a number of different uh, services that are out there that you can subscribe to personally. Uh, you don't have to stay with ComEd. You can switch to any of the other parties. Uh, unfortunately, as a group, we've missed our opportunity. OK. Thank you. And you know what, Pat, and right. just because I was one of those who participated as well, and Ruben Bartista, our um, assistant administrator, he gave me a link um, to show actual side-by-side -side comparisons of what people are paying and charging. Mm -hmm. So I was able to find one that worked best for me just by from that link that he gave me. So I can share that with you if you like. Thank you. Okay. Stevie, this address back 25654 Firestone. A couple of questions. Some time ago when the landlord license ordinance was being discussed, I asked about Gulf Vista, and has that been looked into as to how that will affect the landlord license ordinance? No. I think it should be. Probably not. It, 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 it needs to at least be evaluated probably as to whether it's relevant in that level or not. It's probably the largest landlord in, in Romania we get. Mm -hmm. Second question that uh, there's been a concrete floor being poured in the area by First Midwest Bank. There was a statement made that Will County is putting an office in Monee. Is that in fact erroneous or is that correct? That's correct. The Will County Health Department is putting an office in next to the bank. Thank you. I believe they're basically moving out of University Park to the Is okay. it separate? It, 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 oh, additional. Okay. I thought it was a migration. Apparently, they're adding. Anybody else for? Yep. Larry Shry, first, before I ask this question. <clears throat> the 19 years I've been in this town, and the streets have, by you guys have been an excellent job. Keep up the good work, big time. Mostly to the attorney. Um, we met on that same. October 9th. Can I ask you a question about TIF district? Mm -hmm. Had you found out any more information on this? Now, I did more research on this, and according to what I have found out, and what you had told me that night, that the TIF is supposed to be frozen and not being able to increase. Now, what I did find out is that when assessed values are increased in town, that's when the TIF goes up. That's when everything goes up. No. Each line item is a separate entity. Not, it's not a board spectrum. This village is what dictates the TIF district, uh, the taxes. Nobody else. 
just like the library. What happens is it all gets added up together, and then as one, you see that increase in this in this uh, the taxes. The TIF district, most of that money goes to the TIF district. It doesn't go to the school. Uh, a lot of people are under the impression that it's the schools dictating that tax rate on this. It is not, because most of my taxes on that TIF district, and you can go verbatim on light item, that all of it, most of it is going to the TIF district. My question is, if that's the case, and these TIFs are getting increased when we are getting uh, the assessed values going down, how is that possible when it's only supposed to be taxed when it goes up? If we were to look at your tax bill, it make it easier than, than right now I'm dealing with an abstract. But the way it works, and Larry, help me out here on this, the way a TIF district works is once it's implemented, there is a, an evaluation of what the property is identified as worth at that particular time. That is locked in. That is frozen, if you will, that value. And what happens is not so much the TIF value, but so whatever the value, let's say it's uh, worth $100,000, okay, as assessed or whatever. What happens is the, the amount that the library is getting, the amount that the school district was getting, the amount that the forest preserve, you know, all, those, all the other taxing bodies were getting, they're still continuing to get that same amount that they got when the TIF district was implemented. The reason why a TIF district is implemented is for the purpose of encouraging development. Right. And so as development is, is encouraged and there's incentives that are used off of that difference. So the school district or the library district, whichever the case may be, are not losing any money at all based on the fact that they're getting everything they were getting previously based on the assessed valuation of that property. What happens is as you increase the value of your property and someone's going to be organic just by the nature of the economy. Um, but for instance, when we have vacant property and we're actually building something out on there, then the value goes astronomical. Well, that's how we're able to give an incentive to a business or a developer to come in and do something. Right. I totally understand the way that works. Okay. <clears throat> My question to you is, and you said the schools are still getting the same amount of money. Have you seen a property tax bill in a TIF district uh, in consecutive years? If you have something you want me to look at, I'd be glad to. Well, the reason why I'm saying that is because when that TIF district went into effect, you can see the difference of the schools getting a lot lower and the TIF district getting the compensation that the schools were supposed to get. So it is not yeah, that it, fact. It, that doesn't make sense to me. I, don't I can that look at your tax. why the school district really discourages right. use of TIF districts because they do not. Right get that because the EAV, the whole of the pie, is now cut down by this $100,000. So the piece of the pie that the school district gets is actually less. If you remember, I actually, when I was working for the school district and proposed one of the TIF districts many years ago um, because of that, because the that little portion or piece of the pie was now, for 23 years, the school district would never see value from it. That's they, would, they would get what they were getting before. Nothing new. But yeah, so if it's assessed at $100,000, now for 23 years it's built up and there's sales tax and everything coming into it, Property the school tax. district does not get any part of that for that 23 or 7 years or whatever it costs. Right. Wow. So everything is now lower to the school district. No. No. Nothing and I, you, you got to look at the property tax bills, and it'll show you in black and white that the school district here is getting $300, the TIF district here is getting $500. It states it in black and white. Now, the, the other question I have, too, is, is the fact of this as far as assessed value. Now, if the assessed value goes up, that's fine and dandy, and yes, that tax will go up. But the problem I'm having, and I've been seeing across the board, that if you're getting a decrease in the assessed value, then why is the Village of Moni taxing that TIF district at a higher rate each year. We're not changing what we, we're taxing that district yet. I, I think, sir, and I'll, look, I'll be glad to look at your tax sure. bill. I think you're, you might be talking about the tax rate that those charges. Well, what I'm looking at is the tax rate, right. Why is the tax rate on the TIF district going up? If I, and I'll, I'll be glad to look at your tax bill, but a lot of TIF they call underwater, where when it was established years ago, mm -hmm. the values were a lot better. 
And when the assessor comes out, they're not worth what they used to be. Right. And that might be the situation what you're just describing. I'll be glad to take a look at your tax bill, though. But it's not unusual where some TIFs are what they the only one right now. It's underwater by $70 million. Not this one, but a different one. But it, isn't it written in this ordinance that if it's assessed higher and not lower, that you can raise the tax rate on that? Every, 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 unit, every unit of government has the ability to increase or decrease right. their levy. Exactly. And that ultimately does have an effect on the overall tax whole on right. the property. But the individual school district, library district, and all that stuff, they're still supposed to get the same percentage that they were before off of the valuation that was originally there. Not out of the 5th district, though. Yes, sir. You, well, I, I will we'll look at it. We'll yeah, look at, look at it because you'll see exactly what I see all the time. I see the money that gets increased to the TIF district and this lower level, what the schools, now mind you, I've owned the buildings for 17 years, so I see the property tax bills. And when that TIF district was introduced, you saw that the TIF got this much, and now instead of the schools getting all that, the school district went down this way. Well, well if you're talking about proportionally in the total tax bill, you're probably not correct. No, no. I thought if you're just, talking about the dollar amount going to the school district, it may not be the exact dollar amount going to the school district or the library district or whatever, but in general, based on the valuation of the property, the percentage that was allocated originally based on the valuation, that shouldn't change, correct, Larry? And but, the, only, the only thing that happens is that each unit of government can change their right. tax multiple or, or the rate. Right, rate. exactly. But what I'm saying, what originally was all the school district, the TIF district shares with the school. It's it's on the, it's on the, my tax bills. We'll look yeah, it. I'll, I'll bring them in. You can take a look at it. But it's on the tax bill. You can see it's shared what the school gets and what the TIF gets, because sure. that was all one entity before. Can you can you are you available to bring a couple? Some of those in, in the next couple of days. Oh, yeah. We have rush hour traffic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Lee Boswell, 5157 Park Lane. I'm here for the Chamber of Commerce and Businesses. Uh, I want to start out first off. We had a meeting uh, Wednesday night, and we were feeling from some of the uh, some of the businesses in town, they don't maybe not come to you, but they come to me because I passed out the certificates the last two weeks, and I got a lot of concerns, and they were wondering um, what we can do to get the business to get closer to you guys besides coming to a meeting and lifting all their problems. And they want to like have maybe a forum or something. I know you can't all be there, but it, I'll open it because of the open text. But if you can just send it. We can schedule something together so we can sit down and discuss things that are troubling these businesses in town. And that, that, that has been our goal, Mr. Boswell, uh, to have some opportunity for that. I, as you know, I, I've attended some of the chamber meetings on or off. Um, I, for some reason, I'm not getting notifications on them anymore. Um, but, um, and I think you have at your chamber meetings typically about four or five of the 200 well, businesses. I can call a special meeting, uh, but I have to have time. And, because the people are concerned, we got to pick a date, or you can, sure. if you can give me a date within a week or two, and then we can have, or maybe you can come to the board. You know, the, you, we've been to meetings right. to see you. Sure. We've got the executive board, but if you're going to, somebody from the, represent sure. the, the board and that to, because uh, be there's a lot of concerns, and I, I'm just tired of just hearing. I said, come to the meeting like I do and voice it. They'll listen to you, but if you don't say nothing, they think everything's hunky dory in this town. I appreciate and, it. And there's a lot of stuff going on that they don't even know about, and they're asking why the businesses are are not doing very well and that stuff. But that that's the main concern, one of the main concerns. And one other thing, I know you guys are short in the office, but a couple uh, there was a couple of people in our uh, meeting saying about the business licenses. They'll be out soon, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, they usually get them for the first of the year, and I know you guys have been short in that. But but uh, they were just concerned for insurance policies from. From other corporations, you know all this stuff going on in there. It's and just so you, so we can communicate on this here, uh, there was some extra information that was being asked of the businesses. Some of that was so that ultimately uh, some of the businesses. I don't know. Do you have a website? Like, 
Do I? I did, yeah, no, mm -hmm. okay. So there's a lot of our businesses, a couple hundred businesses we have, you know, a lot of them, you know, especially the smaller businesses right. don't have a website, they might be lucky to have a Facebook page or something like that. Uh, so some of the questions on there were specifically asked so that we can actually help post information about those businesses, their hours of operation and things mm -hmm. like that. So there's like one whole page of that was just to try to help drive traffic, if you will, uh, organically to your business. Well, I see where you're coming from. And, and then there's other information that was being requested this year that was like the SIC code, which is a standard industry cate categorization. So if we have an opportunity, if we have a congressman or one of our state reps or something like that that says, hey, we got this program that's available for whatever type of industry, and we're going, yeah, we don't know exactly what our businesses are doing. Right. You know, we don't want to be in that situation. We want to be able to have that at our fingertips so we can help you guys. And some people didn't understand that. Again, first year with the newer forms and all that stuff, right. we're trying to create the pattern so we can move forward with that. Uh, are we expecting perfection the first year no. of this? No. I understand. There's a lot of grace going both directions here right it's now. It's just so the way that was brought out. I mean, it got, we got slammed, but we didn't know. You know, it, the past administrations, mm -hmm. it's been there, month, one page and one page, and they need this, this. Two of the things, I didn't even know what it was, even sure. about the, the censure a bond. I didn't, security bond, share bond, sure. I didn't yeah. know the bond. And then these other informations, you know, people were saying, what are they asking for all this stuff for it? And that's why, I'm, you know, I'm here. Yeah, we, we, we got a few questions at the village hall, but not a whole lot. I know, so. it's hard because we're all learning, you know. And I can see you want to get the information, so you know what's going on with all the businesses in town. Well, do you want and to I like I like the communication, you know, sure. I, you know, I'm, besides me and Brian, we're the only one, I come up here and if I got something to say, I want to say it, you know, I try to bridge the thing, because in the past, and, uh, okay, that's for the thing, I just want to, uh, from my heart, and my family, and I just want to thank the board for voting the, the way they did on the, uh, on the, the, uh, the video game. Because I just talked to Excel. I'm getting another machine because it's coming up. But I just want to get, I'm going to give it to Doug Horn, uh, uh, statistics. The new stuff that just came out at 1 o'clock today. It, it surprised me a lot how much. But uh, uh, there's six businesses in this town that has machines right now. There's more coming, I know. And out of them, six, machine, uh, uh, six businesses, three of them are in the chamber. And they asked me that to speak for them, sure. too. And there's 26 machines. And the final t total revenue that Mo Moni is getting from the state, when you get it, when it's all over, Whatever. is $67,328.61. Sure. That's from the, the audit from the, uh, so that's from last year, you guys didn't have anything really, sure. if to be honest. So in a way, I see how some people feel that some people don't like it, but at the same thing, like Heidi, uh, they need programs. If we didn't have gambling here, they want to be at 67,000 less, and it's going to get better. It's going to get bigger and bigger with more people coming. And that's the way, you know, in a way I feel better, because I was on the park, parks and in the past to get money. We had a hard time getting money. So this is, you know, this is the way, even though it's evil, some people say it's evil. I'm say it. I'm say it's evil. evil. Well, well, but it's business, you know, it's business. And that's what was said about the ball was dropped down. We should have had these things over a year ago. They waited and waited, and all the towns got it. Around here, and you guys could have had more uh, sure. more revenue last year than it was this year. But uh, Mr. Boswell, I also want to make sure you're aware of the fact that we're doing what we can while we're endeavoring to bring new business into our community. We're also <laughs> endeavoring to, to protect as much as we can uh, some of what we have. When we recategorize the liquor licenses, um, that was about the same time that we did all this other stuff. Um, we did so with the goal of making sure that, you know, currently we had four taverns, if you will, in town. Uh, we deliberately made sure that we set a limit not to exceed those four that we currently have. Um, because, you know, we don't want just five more bars coming to town. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't want to encourage restaurants to be able to serve alcohol and things of that sort. Personally, do I drink? No. But do I see the relevance of, you know, of, say a Mexican restaurant wanting to serve a Corona or something like that? Yeah, you know, um, so we made provisions for some of that, but I would push a limit, you know, and, and even even the gaming parlors, as a result of Larry's craftsmanship, if you will, on uh, helping us uh, draft the uh, the new categorizations. Um, somebody wants to have a gaming parlor in town? 
they're paying a premium for because they're not really contributing anything else to our town. They're, they're limited menu, limited size, everything else. Um, it's not like what your establishment does for our community, it, which is a place for a lot more camaraderie, if you will. Um, so these other places that want to come in and do this stuff, um, they're not being uh, ignored. Uh, they're not being rejected the opportunity, but they are uh, recognizing the fact that we are prioritizing our, our treatment of the, the businesses that have made us who we are today. So we can't do that for every level of business. Yeah, we're doing what we can. To I know we're still in bad times. We're in the ninth year of this bad uh, recession. Another thing, just to let people know, they probably know, but anyway, there's a lot of people in town here that gamble. And before we even had machines, they went to the boats. And they went to out of town spending their money. At least this way, they're in town. And I, there's people that used to go to boats the overnight. Now they come to our establishments and they sit there and they go home and they don't have to pay the outer. Right? And you know, there's just two sides to the coin. Man. And, and, and Lee, as the chamber president, will be correct? Uh, I also want to just make sure you're aware of this that there's rumors, uh, misinformation that's been circulated out in the public. Uh, even the newspaper. Uh, oh, I, that letter? Well, whatever. Uh, it, it's not accurate. And I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you so you're aware of it. Right. There are ordinances, I was talking to Larry even before the meeting tonight, um, the ordinance pertaining to the, the penny per gallon uh, fuel tax, the 10% uh, for the for the hotel lodging tax. That The, the lodging tax was actually implemented if I recall under Larry Conkle. Right. Five percent. Then when Dan, Dan got it, went up to ten. Okay. So. Or something like but, that. But just so you know, those funds for that are actually used to help market their their uh, visibility through the visitors bureau. So when those monies come in, the, the village may keep a little bit of that, but a large portion of that is actually going to the visitors bureau to help keep us on the map. Right. And we are the southernmost community of the Southland Visitors Bureau's. Uh, footprint, so that benefits us well, and knowing that we have four hotels, motels, um, and there's a benefit to them because how else are they marketing? I mean, I, I don't know, but we're we're actually marketing what's going on there. If they stay with the hotels, there's a chance they're going to come to your bar. Right. Uh, if we have, if you advertise. Yeah. Yeah. So you know we're doing what we can to make sure that the right decisions are being made, and it's not being applied globally across the board to every business and every industry and everything else because. It, it, See, that was one of the concerns, but we'll talk that in a meeting. But it's not necessarily practical, if you will, right? because um, the businesses that are being affected are the ones that, for instance, like the alcohol, tobacco, firearms, things yes. like that, it's, th those end up being issues of public safety. And that's the reason why those specifically, when we were dealing with the need to raise uh, an alternative to property taxes, right. was because of the benefit it would serve to those industries that are, or the, our department, if you will, that's most affected by those. Uh, so we're not saying no, we're just saying, you know, we've got to be uh, pay as you go kind of thing. So, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Noreen Gorman, Piatone Public Library District. I just want to remind everybody with the weather and the situations, if the library would have to close to check our Facebook page, we try to get a message on our phone. We don't follow the same rules that the school districts do. Like when we, this past week, we were open even though it was cold because we don't wait on the bus stop to get to the <laughs> back. We did close early on Thursday because the drifting snow and stuff. But otherwise, we're there. But I just want everyone to know, just call us or check with us if we can venture out if the weather's bad. Okay, and I don't know if it's appropriate to mention any fundraising activities. Is that possible? There were some young men that were uh, injured and one was killed. Yes. We actually and have the phone here that, that I was going to talk about. Too. Okay, then I'm going to offer them. Thank you. Are you part of it too, though? We have it posted at the library. Okay, oh. about the phone? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, if I may, um, with your with the library district, when you have special events that are going on and stuff, please contact uh, Michelle or Mary Jo uh, in the front office here. And if you want us to be able to highlight those as a part, because we're part of your district and everything else, uh, maybe we can put those on our community calendar as well for major, I mean, other than just your regular hours of operation and stuff like that. Okay. But, oh, yes. but if you have something special going on, okay. you know, by all means, let us know. We'll do. Thank, Thank you. you.
Trustee Gonzalez, you had something you wanted to Yeah, and this, this was in our packets too, but I just um, wanted to let everybody know. There was, um, if you don't know, there was a, I might not be able to do this. You want me to do it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there were, there were five of our youth from the high school in our area, Creek Money area here, that on January 1st, and early afternoon, I believe it was, were involved in an accident uh, between Mantino and Bradley. Uh, it claimed the life of one of the youth. Um, at least one of the others, I believe, was, uh, I'm not sure of the current status, but partially paralyzed. Um, and uh, the other three, I, I, I don't know if the, I don't know if the others are still in the hospital or. Everybody, well, one is home, but everybody else is still. So. And uh, so, it's a very difficult situation because, and we're we're trying to be as sensitive as we can about it as as a unit of government because we don't know the details, what led up to it, what was involved in anything else, and there are youth involved, so we're very guarded. I know, um, it's it's difficult because not everybody likes their business dealt with publicly. Um, but regardless, these are these are people that, you know, very unexpected. And as we all know, things happen unexpectedly. Those are sometimes the worst. And um, I mean, to have your life cut short before you even graduate high school, uh, tragic. Uh, Culver's is, um, has, has always been uh, a Crete, Moni, whatever, that's the same owner for both. Um, has always been very helpful when it comes to fundraising and things of that sort. Um, but they are having, uh, is it this Saturday? Uh, this Saturday, all day Saturday, they're having 50%. Um, that's huge because I, I don't think there's any profit in the form at all. 50% of all their sales are going to help raise funds for uh, the, the medical cost and things of that sort for these youth. And, um, so, as much as possible, I know it's actually on our, on our calendar, our community calendar on the village website, but um, tragedy strikes and um, it's not easy to deal with. Um, so, if you can get the word out, if you're hungry for a butter burger or some ice cream or something cheese like that, uh, yeah, cheese curds, okay. Um, but it's for a good cause, which is always a good thing. So. And talking about fundraising too, Lee, if you could mention or on the website too, they are doing raffles um, to raise additional funds inside of Culver's too. So if any of the businesses have any items to donate for those raffles, um, we have contact information for the right. Just hit send it right over to the bar, and I'll, I'll rapid fire with all the members in the chamber. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anybody else for open to the public? Okay, I don't believe we have anything for executive session tonight. That's correct. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. The time is now 8, I'm sorry, 741. So I move. Second. Pulse to raise it. Roll call. Okay. Trustee Craig? Yes. Pulse Yes. Warren? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. 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 Yes.